It's possible to restore your old photographs in a couple of seconds using Photoshop's Photo Restoration AI Neural Filter. Being an automatic filter, it's not without its problems, but today I'll show you how to use it to its full potential whilst also massively reducing any major issues you may run into. I've also made a video on how to colour your images automatically, but in this video, we'll just focus on the restoration process. So we have our photograph here to restore. As you can see on this image, we have scratches, these white spots, and quite a lot of grain. To start, generally speaking, these AI filters work better if we've taken a few initial steps before we activate them. Firstly, I'm going to crop out this black border and tape, since it's certainly not something you would want as part of your final image. By removing it, we will also be reducing the time the filter takes to work. We can do that by going over to our crop tool on the left and clicking it. We get these helpful white guidelines to show us what we will be removing from our image. Personally, I like to make sure that delete cropped pixels is unticked in the top menu, as that way we can always recrop an image later if we change our mind without deleting anything. Then we simply move in our cropping borders until we are happy with how it looks. We can get finer control over our borders by holding down the control or command key on Windows or Mac while dragging them. When we're happy, we can either press the enter key or click this little tick icon to accept our crop. The only other pre-filter step is to adjust our brightness levels, as older images tend to be at least a bit faded. I made a complete tutorial on fixing faded images if you have a far more faded image than this one. For this photograph, however, we're just going to use Image Auto Contrast. We can now move on to the restoration itself. To apply our Photo Restoration Neural Filter, we select the layer that we wish to restore and go up to Filter, Neural Filters. Here we have a list of all the possible filters that can be applied. If you've not used a filter before, you can download it over here on the right of your selected filter. At the bottom of the list of filters, we can see we have the Photo Restoration Filter which we can activate with this little switch here. It may take a few seconds, possibly a few minutes potentially to process the image, but then we get a first draft preview of how our restored image will look. In the bottom left corner of our controls, we have this little button titled Show Original that we can switch on and off to see a before and after of our restoration at any point. We won't be using the Layer Preview button next to it for this tutorial, but it allows you to either see the layer you want to restore by itself in isolation, or see how it looks when combined with other layers in your project, but this is purely for preview purposes. So to fine tune our restoration, we have three major controls. Photo Enhancement is designed to work with the colour, contrast and details of the overall image. Enhanced Faces is designed to improve details of any faces in the image specifically, and Scratch Reduction attempts to remove scratches from the image. I'll switch these all down to zero, so we can see what they do in practical terms. With the Photo Enhancement slider cranked up to 100%, we can see that our image has been softened quite a bit. While we have lost a lot of the grain and dark spots from the image, we've also lost quite a bit of detail, particularly in the hair and around the eyes. For that reason, I'm going to reduce the Photo Enhancement slider to 30%, which for this picture seems to retain the vast majority of the detail while still giving an initial cleanup to the image. Next up, we have Enhanced Face. And as a quick side note, if you can't see the Enhanced Face slider in your Photo Restoration filter, it only appears when Photoshop is able to detect a face. In images where it can't detect a face, this option doesn't appear. With Enhanced Face at 100%, we get this very intense effect. This slider seems to be attempting to remove any imperfections, as it sees them, from the image, while enhancing any clearly defined facial features. Unfortunately, in this case, we can see that it has smoothed out the skin to almost make it look like plastic, and it's made our eyes into dark voids. Also, while it's hard to decipher them amongst the grain and dark spots on the image, her freckles have also been entirely eliminated. Reducing the filter to around 20% for this image seems to be the best choice for retaining original details. Cranking that slide up just a little more may improve the overall look of the image, however that would be in exchange for losing some of the finer details. For your own restorations, this balance and trade-off is entirely up to you. Scratch reduction at 100% has done its best to remove every scratch from the image. Unfortunately, it has also removed some scratches that didn't exist as well. The hair on both the right and left side of her face was viewed as a scratch and removed. Most concerningly, the little stitching of her ribbon and this small metal heart necklace were entirely obliterated. Sadly, even scratch reduction at 1% removes these fine details. Hopefully in the future, Adobe will add the option to freeze areas of the image to protect them from the restoration, 
much like in their Liquify filter, but for now, we have a way to manually fix this ourselves. At this point in time, we'll not worry about losing our fine details, and we'll just worry about removing the actual scratches. We'll add in those fine details back in another step shortly. So with that in mind, I put scratch reduction up to 100%. Now we have this adjustments arrow that hides a variety of more in-depth controls. Noise reduction will reduce noise and grain in the image. Color noise reduction does the same, but for color images. Halftone artifacts reduction will reduce those printing dots that you can see when looking closely at an image from a newspaper, for example. Finally, JPEG noise reduction reduces the effects of damage caused by overly compressed JPEG images. For some reason, the standard noise reduction takes an incredibly long time to process for me on this image, so I've left it switched off, but your results may vary. The other adjustments are not relevant for this particular image. Now at this point, we've basically taken this restoration as far as we can using purely automated methods, and we now have to move on to our next step of manually bringing back the details we lost. At the bottom of our photo restoration filter, we have output controls, which allows you to continue working with your restoration in a variety of ways. We can choose to save our restoration to our current layer, replacing the original image. We can also choose to save it out to a new layer, or a new layer masked, which will keep your original image safe, and also give you the option to add a mask to your duplicate image. At the bottom of the list, we can even choose to save our restoration out to an entirely new document. However, for our purposes, I'd recommend selecting the Smart Filter Output option, and pressing OK. Smart filters are a little more system intensive, so if necessary, select New Layer Masked instead. A Smart Filter has two main advantages. Firstly, it automatically adds a mask to our image, which you'll need to restore those lost details. Most importantly, however, you can, at any point, double-click the Neural Filter on your image layer and make additional changes to your filter, in this case your restoration settings if you so wish to alter them. This white square on the layer is a layer mask. I've made an in-depth tutorial video on how to use layer masks, which I'll link below. But in quick terms, a layer mask allows you to stop parts of your image being visible, without actually permanently erasing them. We can see this layer mask square is white, meaning that all of our restored image is visible. If I quickly make this mask entirely black, we can see that our entire restoration filter has been obscured. With it being obscured, all we can see is our original unrestored image. If I make it half black and half white, we can see it becomes half restored. With our layer mask entirely white, we select the mask to make sure it's highlighted. We can then select our paintbrush on the left, or with the B key, and paint with black to obscure just selected parts of our restoration. In this case, it allows us to paint details such as her hair and heart necklace back into the image, while retaining most of our automatic restoration. If you do find that you have to use layer masks, I do highly recommend watching that other tutorial I made, as layer masks are probably the most powerful tool you can use in Photoshop for a variety of reasons. For the background smudges, there is a method for fixing them, but if it will work for you or not will depend on your particular photograph. For this picture, it's a very simple background, so it will work fine. What we have to do is cut out our subject to protect her from the restoration process. Since we want to leave a bit of an edge of background around her, I chose to use the lasso selection tool. The lasso tool allows us to freely draw a selection onto the image, so we want to draw around her attempting to save as much of the undamaged background as possible. You have to keep the mouse clicked while you are drawing with the lasso tool. So while you are drawing, you can hold down the space key to move your image without unclicking your mouse. When you get close to the start of your selection, you can simply release the mouse click to automatically complete your selection. These marching ants, as they are known, show us our selection, but by default you are selecting inwards, meaning that we have her selected, but we actually want to select the background. We can invert our selection by pressing Ctrl, Shift and I, or on a Mac, that would be Command, Shift and I. With marching ants at the sides of our image, we can see that we now have the background selected instead. We need to click this little icon that looks like an addition sign within a box to add a new layer. Then we can simply go to Edit and select Content Aware Fill. This tool deserves a full tutorial by itself, but what is happening is that Photoshop is attempting to automatically repair our selection, in this case, the background. It's getting the information on how to repair our background from the highlighted green parts of the image. Obviously we can't use a human to repair a background. 
so we need to make sure that Photoshop is not using those parts of our subject to repair our background. By hovering over our image, we can see our cursor has a subtraction symbol in the centre of it. We simply need to use this tool to erase the green parts covering our subject. If you erase too much, you can hold down the Alt or Option key to change the subtraction cursor into an addition cursor and paint parts green again as needed. Or you can select to add or subtract from these buttons in the top left. With all that done, we make sure that we're outputting this new background to a new layer and we press OK. Again, this was kind of the perfect image for this particular background repairing technique. My more in-depth restoration videos show you how to use the manual restoration tools in far more complicated examples. So if you run into issues while using AI to restore an image, check out those videos. If you've not had enough of my voice, I've also made a tutorial utilising this restored image but instead using Photoshop's Colorize Neural Filter. I once again show how to overcome some of the problems you may encounter while using it, so please consider also checking that video out. I'm happy to make even more videos about artificial intelligence or AI, so if that's something you'd be interested in, please give the video a like as that tells YouTube they should show this video to more people and it's very encouraging. But for now, thanks for watching.